my name is Jesse Nowak, also known as No Whacking. I'm a voice actress and parody writer, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 95. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. It's good to be back, Norman. Hello. So, you're back. It's been a while. Yes, it has. And moving on to our next co-host is James Cork. Hey, Norman. Hey, Dan. How's it going? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I'm good. Good to know, guys. Yep, yep. And our amazing guest for this week, the one and only Noah King. Hello. Hey there, Noah King. How are you? I'm doing really good. I hope it's not too early, late, or anywhere in between. <laughs> nah, it's like noon, so normal people should be up, but <laughs> I am me, so I'm like, no, I need like... 12 hours of sleep, okay, or else, eh. So, I really should be up. <laughs> I know what you mean. So, what time do you sleep? Usually, I would sleep out until like 1 or 2, maybe, because I was up late, but <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. That's alright, there are nocturnal people as well. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> we are people of the internet, we don't have a time to go to sleep. Uh, boys. Exactly. <laughs> But anyway, well, anyway, before we start the show, we need to ask you the four important questions. Question number one is, who is your favorite character? Uh, Rainbow Dash. Ooh, really now? Huh. Why Rainbow Dash? Um, I just, I think I can uh, relate to her the most, because I was very much like Rainbow Dash when I was growing up. I was very um, competitive, and, like, just the whole attitude of her being very confident, and I, I just love her. She's great. Ah, that's awesome, that's awesome. And what about your favorite episode? If you'd asked me before season three, I would have said, um, well, actually, I don't know. Was Read It and Weep, was that season three? I forget. That was episode was 16 season of season two. That's the episode where Rainbow Dash lear- uh, learns that she's uh, a, a book fan. Yeah, I love that one. But don't so worry, I think it's allowed multiple between- choice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will choose Read and Weep and Too Many Pinkies. <laughs> Wow, okay. I did not expect that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on to the third question. How did you become a fan of the show? Well, all my male friends uh, started becoming fans of the show, and like one of them sent me the link to uh, the first episode and was like, you should watch this, like totally watch it. And I was like, yeah, right, okay. You know, like he was playing a trick on me or something so i never watched it and then a couple days go by and he's like did you watch it and i was like no said, you you know you linked me my little pony right and he was like no just seriously just just do it i was like all right so i watched it and then i watched another episode and i watched another episode and it was good <laughs> that's how he starts did you watch it yeah. no okay i watched it just to make you shut up oh wow and now i'm in now i'm doing stuff for the show oh god ah when well, was the moment? Like out of control. <laughs> Indeed. When was the when was the moment when you you had to like because everybody has that in that we sit that we stop watching the episode then we turn around and stare into the void thinking oh my god what is wrong with me I really like this when was that moment? <laughs> you know I never actually had that moment because I was I'm a girl I guess so I was like it's okay I can like whatever I want sort of yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so happy that you were the one who said that. <laughs> yeah. Had we said that, uh, we would be called sexist. <laughs> oh my god, no. Yeah. We want to avoid that so hard. Well, you're a girl. You must like horses, right? Because <laughs> girls like horses. Colorful things. <laughs> yeah, like horses and tutus. And they like to be mates when they're uh, uh, grown ups. Oh god, no. Stereotypes. <laughs> oh, the stereotypes. Compact, all in one. It's funny because I um I grew up a tomboy, so I'm really not into girly stuff at all, except for my little pony. <laughs> like, this is the <laughs> one girly thing I indulge myself in. Well, it's a good thing to be in. It's a good thing to be in. It's a very good girly thing to be fa- to be a fan of. It's not like brats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Barbie. Oh. <laughs> that said, what did you think of Equestria Girls? Um. I gotta admit, I thought it was gonna be really bad because the first time I heard about Equestria Girls was I was a guest at a convention called Big Apple PonyCon in New York, and uh, a fan at a panel asked me about what I think of like how I think Equestria Girls is gonna go. I don't think it had a name at that point. They were just like there were leaked images, you know, of them as humans, and I was like, that's never gonna happen. They wouldn't do that, you know. It's probably it's just Photoshop, you know. 
Uh, but then it actually happened. Uh, and I thought it was going to be awful because it seemed like they were just cashing in on another toy market, you know? Like, they made the movie specifically so they could make these toys of Equestria Girls. Uh, but it it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't. Um, the There were very wrong things about it. Like, the the villain, like, it, it was the big climax of the movie where, like, uh, Sid... Oh, what's her name? Sunset Shimmer? Sunshine Shimmer? Yes, Sunset Shimmer. Yeah, Sunset, Sunset Shimmer, yeah. Yeah, she's like, she's holding the hammer to the gateway or whatever, the portal, and she's just like, you know, give me the crown or else I'll smash it. And then uh, Twilight's like, no. And she's like, okay, fine, you beat me. I was like, what is going on? That was so stupid. Why? <laughs> could you could you not think of how to end that? That's just poor writing. <laughs> Don't blame that on a kid's movie. That's just poor writing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we, they need to surprise us with that demonic person. But uh, we, we're running too long. And my final question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Uh, I think my mom... Oh, uh, my, my friends like the show also because I recommended it to them. So that's not a problem. And neither is my mom, actually. My dad doesn't really get involved with my voice acting stuff, so he doesn't really know about anything I like. But my mom knows that I like the horses... And I think she was, she said, it's funny, I didn't know that she knew, but then she sent me a text one time uh, a couple weeks ago that was a picture of, she had taken a picture of the little stuffed uh, rainbow dash mm-hmm. that was like in a store or something. And it was like, is this horse you like? <laughs> and it's actually funny because at first she took a picture of a Twilight because my favorite color is purple. So mm-hmm. she assumed that I would like Twilight. She's like, this horse you like? And I'm like, I, actually, I like the blue one. Her name's Rainbow Dash. But, you know, good good guess. <laughs> yeah. Come on, misconception. It's not the looks. It's the personality. <laughs> and then they'll, she'll suddenly find this G3 Rainbow Dash. Hmm. and be like, this one? Oh, no. <laughs> Rainbow Dash the always that's... dresses in style. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> <gasps> anyway, Hats and darling. Oh, boys. Anyway, thank you for answering the four important questions. And with that, we can move on to the next topic. And in the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, the new dynamic duo in the comic book industry. It's been a year since IDW announced the creation of the My Little Pony comic. And thanks to people like Kitty Cook, Andy Price, and Heather Brecken? Sorry, I'm bad with names. To name a few who have made the comic a phenomenal success. In an article by Newsorama, they did an interview with John Barber, senior editor for IDW. In the article, they talk about IDW's relationship with Hasbro and its product. They also talk about the phenomenal success of the My Little Pony comic and their future plans for the comic. Links can be found in the show notes. And this is a good read, guys, because it tells us a lot about the inside of how IDW and Hasbro work together. And most of IDW products or comic lines are Hasbro products. So, Dan, you got anything to say? Well, this is really refreshing to hear some people talking about the future of the comic because I recently just managed to get my hands on the Equestria Girls Blu-ray disc and yeah. I viewed the extra features and stuff. And uh, the way that the people there talked about it is like, oh, you know, we can do anything now. We can make them fishes. I'm like, no, hell no. And now it's good to hear them talking about the comic in a more, I don't know, friendly manner for people like us who watch it because I don't want to see Pinkie Pie as a fish. Okay then. So, James, what about you? Well, I'm a big fan of the comics and it's good to see that they are moving forward with them. Oh, alright. So, Noah King, you got any opinion about said news? I've never really read any of the comics so I'm not super knowledgeable about it. (laughs) Oh, you should. You should. It's a really good read. Yeah. I've heard nothing but good things. Indeed, indeed. So anyway, that was news time. And moving on to the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Noah King, a voice actress extraordinaire. Noah King, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Oh, having fun? Yeah, totally. Hey, awesome. I've done my job right. So anyway, um, before we start, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are? Sure. Uh, my name is Jesse Nowak. I go by Nowacking Online. Uh, I voice act and write parodies for the internet. Mm. Uh, I'm mainly known for voicing Vinyl Scratch in Epic Pie Time, Epic Web Time, Pony Rock Anthem, stuff like that. Uh, I also voice Little Pip in the Fallout Equestria radio play. And I write for Alligator in the Tub Productions, which do the epic Blank Time videos and all that good uh-huh. stuff. 
I, I noticed that you do a lot with ponies and you get popular with ponies. But if I'm not mistaken, you also do anime roles, right? Uh, yeah, I was um, I was in an anime called Queen's Blade Rebellion, and I voiced a, a character of the day, pretty much, uh-huh. named Izumi, and she's adorable, and I love her. <laughs> and I also, um, <laughs> I'm in a bridge series and stuff like that, and I, I write for them. Oh, you're in a bridge series as well? Mm-hmm, yeah. I'm, um, I'm Saris in Helsing Bridge by Team Four Star, and Sasha in Attack on Titan Bridge by Team Four Star, and I died in an episode of Dragon Ball Z Bridge. <laughs> Uh, I was I was a mom and my child, and we both died, so that was fun. Um, I also write for Pokemon Bridged, and I voice Misty, Officer Jenny, Nurse Joy, Max, a bunch of people in that. And I do my own series called Dark Swamp, which is a dramedy parody that takes footage from Black Lagoon and makes its own plot to that. Uh, and I voice Revy and a ton of people in something that. Something like Friendship uh, is Witchcraft? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's why you have a uh, Revy... Picture as your avatar in Skype. <laughs> yes, uh, Revy <laughs> is one of my favorite characters that I voice. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. When did you realize that uh, you wanted to dedicate your talent to voice acting? Like, what was the turning point in, in, your, in your life that you decided to start doing this? Well, I moved a lot as a kid, but one of the big moves was I went from uh, Pennsylvania to Connecticut during my sophomore year of high school. And so I was like 15 at the time and I had been, I've been acting since I was six Mm -hmm. and I had just discovered what voice acting actually was. So I thought, oh yeah, I'll just give it a try, you know, cause I, um, I got here in the summer and so all the kids who lived around me were off on vacation somewhere so that there was no one to hang out with, you know, so I didn't really have much to do anyway. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'll give it a, a shot. And I was awful at it. (laughs) <laughs> but then I kept oh. going at it, and now I'm less awful at it. <laughs> and um, I originally didn't have anything to voice, so I wrote my own material, which oh. um, became my first abridged series. And apparently I was somewhat good at the writing side of it, too, because people were actually like watching my stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I can uh, try this for a while, writing and voicing, and just see where it leads me. And I think the point where I... I've just always wanted to do it since that point, I guess. I never really thought about what my end game was. I just thought I'd just uh, just keep doing it because it's fun. <laughs> you know, you, you're way too hard on yourself, although I can totally relate because it's kind of like a motivation kind of way that, oh, I sucked before, but now I suck a little bit less. <laughs> so it's like it's, it's a way to keep you on your toes to keep improving more and more. It's like never being happy with your work can be a, a, a difficult approach, but it's definitely going to give results. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm a I'm a huge perfectionist when it when it comes to that too. Like characters I really care about, like Revy, I I sometimes do like 20 takes of the same line, and mm-hmm. then I don't find one that I like, so I have to keep going. <laughs> Make it 21, and the 21 is the best line. So, um, no, I think I was wondering when you started with uh, doing a bridge, what inspired you to do it in a bridge series? Uh, it was mainly because. Um, the first one I saw was Naruto Bridge, mm-hmm. which Vegeta 3986 and Masako X were doing at the time. And I was into Naruto at the time. And that's, wh- that's why I found it. I found it on accident because I was looking up Naruto stuff. And I just found it so funny that they could take footage and write their own thing to it, you know. And I found that fascinating. And I wanted to be a writer when I was younger, but I kind of lost track of that a couple years before because I was focusing on... Uh, Cross country. I was a cross country runner. I was oh. one of the top five in my um, school. Oh, so that's that's, I was focused on that. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. So within the fandom, within the MLP fandom, you are most known for uh, Boys in Vinyl Scratch, which is a character that hasn't had any dialogue or character development and who has been in the in the show for like three, in three episodes and always has a background appearance. So uh, how did you come up with a uh, voice for her and how much fun on interpretation uh, did you put on her when, uh, when, when developing her personality and the way she sounds? Well, uh, my friend Rob Bob and I had originally met each other because he was a fan of Pokemon Bridged mm. and it's like that... It's the stereotype that all the writers on the internet know each other, but it's kind of true. Like, we meet through that. <laughs> so Rob and I, um, we added each other. And 
he had written the script for Epic Cupcake Time and showed it to me. And I was like, oh, this is great, dude. Like, you just do this. It's going to be great. And he did, and it was great. And then that, um, he, he was writing uh, Pi Time and sent me the script for that as well. Uh, so I could look over and tell, tell, me, uh, tell him my opinion of it. And I was like, yeah, this is great, too. This is going to be awesome. Oh, Vinyl Scratch is in here. Now, now, granted, I knew nothing about Vinyl Scratch at this point, like zero. I just knew that she was like a white horse that people went bonkers over, even though she hadn't had any lines. So I was like, yeah, you know, I've never voiced a pony, you know. Like, if you want me to just throw a line in there for her, I'd be happy to do it, you know. But it's not a big deal if you don't want me to. And he was like, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, that would... (laughs) Wow, you! I think you would really fit vinyl. <laughs> I was like, really? Oh, okay. I don't know anything about her, but all right. So he wrote a line and brought me in to record, like brought me in as in we were in a Skype call. And I was setting up and stuff. And I was like, so uh, what do you want for this character? Like high voice, low voice, medium, what, like, what personality? And he was like, just be you. <laughs> and I was like, just be me. And he's like, yeah, no, seriously, this character is going to be you pretty much. So just, just be yourself. And I had never played a character as myself before. So it was very interesting and cool. I was like, okay. So I added, it was just one line, but let's spin this shit. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> and so for that yeah. matter has anyone recognized you from your voice because i knew like when i heard you on the call i was like wait is she acting or what <laughs> i was recognized um uh, i think just by my voice i was recognized like in a food court <laughs> somewhere i forget which mall it was but uh they were like i'm sorry this is gonna sound weird are you no wacky and i, like, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I was actually recognized at my college by oh, some God. fan of mine. And I was like, no, the bronies are finding me. But like, it wasn't a brony. It was, it was very They're nice. everywhere. But um, back to the question, I forgot to say that um, for vinyl, she's very similar to me. So it was easier to get in character. But when uh, they wrote Wub Time, I was like, okay, I actually have to do some research on the character now. So I went through and I wanted to see what the fandom thought of vinyl, you know. So I read fanfics. I looked at fan art. I, like, looked up everything I could find on this chick and then uh, kind of developed my own thing for her. Uh, so vinyl, she's a lot – she has a smoother voice and a lot more confidence and kind of arrogant sometimes <laughs> more than I do. And, uh, so it was very cool to develop a character that, uh, you know, you get to basically make the voice for and everything. Um, and I later got to do that for Little Pip in Fallout Equestria. Ah, sweet. Uh, continuing with, um, uh, Boys in Vinyl, there is this one animation called, it's basically, it's simply called Cartoon, Vinyl, uh, Vinyl and Neon. And it's, it's on the Living Tombstones YouTube channel. That interpretation of vinyl is completely different from what we have seen in other videos where she's uh, usually doing the wop 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 or with her uh, with her bass or talking about music. In this one, she's just simply hanging out with a friend. Um, so I was wondering, how much freedom did you have to uh, voice act for that one cartoon, if you remember, or how much freedom they give you to develop uh, this character? Is like, do they ask you specifically to go whoptastic? Or do you have a, a broader range of uh, acting with her? Well, um, I started in theater mm. acting. And you can always tell if um, a voice actress started in theater or a bridge series because um, based on their, their acting and stuff. But with me, you can't tell because I started with theater and did it for so long. And now I've been doing a bridge series for so long that you get you get used to a certain delivery of lines. And with acting... Since I had the theater background, I'm able to uh, – I'm not sure what I'm trying to say, but I'm trying to say that uh, Vinyl doesn't have to be super extreme all the time. You know, She can be like chilling with her friends or she can be uh, emotional and scared like she is in I Am, I Am Octavia, mm-hmm. uh, You know, just stuff like that. Like, So uh, they don't say really uh, – well, sometimes they'll say the emotion uh, in the script – I wasn't directed for it over Skype or anything. So that guy just gave me the script and was like, go nuts. So uh, I was able to just imagine what the scene would be like if Vinyl was just chilling in a record store with her friend, you know, and they were off duty and she didn't have to put on this persona of larger than life. Um, Cause that's what I love about Vinyl. She has so many layers. She's not just this 
big uh, star that is so full of herself, you know, she has insecurities and she, she has friends, you know, I, I, I really like vinyl because of that. Oh, interesting, because from what I've seen of all the vinyl um, voiceovers, um, especially yours, I, I get a sense that you made the character who she is. Like, you invented her persona, you invented everything about her. So every fanfic beyond what you've done is based on you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah. I um, It was very fun. I, I'm pretty sure vinyl's like... One of those characters that, like, if I got a tattoo, I would tattoo her on her on my body somewhere because she's just fantastic. <laughs> she's a great acting exercise as well. Yeah. So in so, theater, did you use to method act? You know, I've heard that a lot, and I forget what it means every time. <laughs> uh, it's actually just when you're not even on stage acting, you're still in character, kind of deal. You come go completely immersed into that character that you're supposed to play. Yeah, yeah, I used to do that. Okay, so I guess when t- they told you just be yourself with vinyl, that was a really good thing to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was like the thing to get me in the right mindset. Because usually when I'm brought in for a character, they tell me her personality, they tell me what kind of voice they want for her, you know. But with vinyl, it was just be yourself. <laughs> so. People, of course, they know you more for vinyl, but there is uh, there is one role that you did in uh, in the Phoenix Wright MLP crossover, Turnabout Storm. You played the character of Gilda, and oh, unlike yeah. vinyl, yeah, unlike vinyl, uh, Gilda already has an established personality, and she has kind of like a, a niche fan base within the fandom. So, uh, how much of a challenge was it for you uh, to approach this character in getting the personality right and? trying to make her both sound like uh, like a jerk but also with uh, with a conflicted heart of gold uh well gilda was probably one of my hardest roles honestly because i i hate voice matching because i don't like being judged on how good a voice actor i am based on how well i can imitate another person's character you know like i don't see how other people can do it because it, it's such i i have high, high re- i have high respect for people who voice match because that's like an incredible skill that i don't have but um, well, I kind of have it with, um, I voice Max in Pokemon Bridged, and I do like, people say that I do like a spot on Max mm. uh, impression, so that's like the one instance where I'm like comfortable voice matching, but everything else I'm like, nope, I'm just gonna do my own thing. But with <laughs> Gilda, it was a huge challenge because, um, she has such an interesting texture to her voice, and she has such an interesting way of, uh, delivering lines, you know, uh, Marika Hendricks voices her, and she also voices Revy in Black Lagoon, and so, Ah, uh, this was before I voiced Revy, uh, so I didn't know that I'd be going back to Marika Hendricks to voice match again. But Gilda, she had like 132 lines or something like that, Whoa. and I recorded them all. And then I wasn't satisfied with it, so I deleted it and did it all again. <laughs> so that wow. was like, <laughs> I just I could I I'm such a perfectionist. I couldn't let it go the way it was. I had to um, I studied the character. I watched um that episode that she's in maybe like three times, four times just to study the character and make sure I had all her mannerism down and stuff. So that was, that was a huge challenge for me and it was kind of a pain in the ass, but I'm so glad I did it because you can't be scared of doing stuff, especially in acting because you just got to do it. You know, it's, um, you never know what you can do until you try it basically. Definitely. That's a good um, lesson to teach us. Go for broke. This is me going complete uh, praising on you because uh, I think you did an amazing job in uh, Turnabout Storm. Uh, I'm going to oh, admit this right, aw- right away. Your performance rendered, rendered me to tears. It was oh. so good. And it, it, it made me forget about uh, uh, Marika Hendricks during that one uh, time because it was you were doing like you said you were doing your own thing and it showed you completely took over the character and it was very very well done so uh bravo like very good job oh thank you that means a lot to me what criteria do you follow to uh, pick your projects like uh what will be okay with you and uh, what would you say is like no i'm not going to i'm not going there or i'm not going to do that well basically i get a ton of requests and uh, offers and stuff a week. So I have to be very uh, careful about what I choose because sometimes I don't want to overcommit to things and then it takes months to get lines in, you know? Mm. I don't want to be that chick. Uh, So if someone just sends me a thing and says, hi, I want to do an animation of vinyl, 
but I don't have any previous animations to show you, and I don't have a script. Will you voice vinyl no, for me? On. I have to be like, oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I can't. Like, I don't know if this is even going to happen, you know? Because um, when you've been in, in it as long as I have, you deliver lines to people, and then you never see anything back, you know? So Ouch. i got to be careful about that stuff. So if it's... um. If it's a known animator or if it's a friend of mine, I'll be like, yeah, sure, you know, I, I can I can trust you to get product out. Uh, of course, because so, your buddy's with him. And I know what you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can just yell at him. <laughs> and be like, hey, do the thing. <laughs> Actually, Jesse, I was looking at your Facebook page and I kind of have to notice, but do you cosplay? No. Are you talking about the – oh, well, actually, I have, I've cosplayed twice. Uh, okay. You're talking about the banana costumes? <laughs> uh, that and, um, well, <laughs> there's a lot of cosplay photos there, so I thought. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, what about, yeah, what's with the I, banana costume? The banana costume was, um, Anime Next is a convention in New Jersey, uh, Somerset, and it's our home convention for Pokemon Bridged because, mm-hmm. um, I lived in Connecticut, uh, Mike lived in New York, and Jerry lives in Pennsylvania. So it, uh, we're the three members of Pokemon Bridge, and it's kind of like the closest one to us. So we we kind of have our home convention there every year, and so we all room together, and we sometimes like make skits and stuff like that. So for and we call it Inside Anime Next. So for Inside Anime Next last year, we did a skit with our friend Kieran, and it's very bizarre. You can find it on YouTube, but um, we do. Uh, oh god, it was a video on sex ed, and it features <laughs> Sonic, Fred <laughs> Kieran, and the pregnancy prevention banana. And I mix oh, uh, 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 people's beds, oh, and I, I make them use protection, pretty much. And so I have a garbage bag, and I put it over my head. It's very bizarre. <laughs> wow, I, that I need to see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you write it, or I did someone it. else write it and get you to do it? It was, um, we all write it together, but we don't really write down a script for the Inside Anime Next. We're basically, we're, we just be like, okay, so this is basically what has to happen. Just get from point A to point B it, it, somehow. So I suppose you'll be really good at whose line. <laughs> yeah, I did some improv uh, back in the day for uh, in acting classes and stuff like that, and I was pretty good. I haven't done it in forever, though, but I love doing live action acting. Uh, this is kind of like a selfish question. It's like a, a question, and if you answer yes, then it's going to be followed by another. Uh, do you have an OC pony of yours, or an OC character? Uh, yes, I have a pony called Encore. Ooh. Awesome, awesome, because uh, I I am the mod of uh, of a pony, pony blog called uh, Ask Movie Slate, and in there I usually draw other uh, uh, people's OCs, with my OC when reviewing a movie because it's it's a movie reviewing blog so I have guests guests coming over so anytime I uh, we have someone on the show I always ask uh, if they have an OC if they answer positively then I will ask them what's your favorite movie and uh, I will draw your OC with mine when reviewing that movie oh that's awesome uh, let me think because I have a few favorites curious question James has anyone said Equestria Girls Oh uh, I have a lot of requests to do Equestria Girls, but nobody said it's their favorite. <laughs> okay. uh, who knows? Perhaps I'm, I might have already done it, but maybe it, we're lucky and I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I guess for me you can say uh, Tangled. Ooh. Ah. Tangled. Oh, that's a good one. You know, I did it already, but I want to re- re- be- repeat the picture because it didn't look right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, cool. Getting you for that one. That's awesome. Yeah, Tangled is a very good movie. You should draw yourself oh, in yeah. it. It'll be a mile long of film strip. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> I, I, I actually literally have it right here because I've been wanting to watch it all Christmas because it's a movie that I usually watch in Christmas. Oh, it's Disney. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I've been wanting to watch it for a while. That's cool. Okay, thank you. Um, and I think I have officially run out of questions because I have one about Bronny's React, but uh, you already told us about that before the, the show started. And Well, I have one more that it's more general than anything. May, may I ask it? Sure. Fire away. Okay. So uh, have you received any kind of fan art or gifts or presents from any fans? Oh, yeah, totally. Um, last year for my birthday or last last year i forget which birthday it was i was fairly new in the fandom uh but uh i received some like uh a dude um i forget what it's called but you you 
take a um you know, a little pony figurine and you repaint it to look like other horses, you know? And they oh. did that for my OC and oh, said cool. to me, you know, like that's so <laughs> Oh, it's like yeah, a pony and, base uh, that is like white that you can then paint, put hair on it and Yeah, yeah. It was like a, a repaint. And uh Spike Firemane like carved my OC into like a uh, wooden Oh, I can't even think of words. A wooden slat is that what it's called? But yeah, I it's like, like a wooden, a wooden, it's a wooden board that then he painted. Oh, plaque! Is the yeah, way I'm looking yeah. for is plaque. Yeah, it was like I've I've received so much fan art that I can't specifically recall all of it. But I I save all of it and I have a little space in my closet where I keep it. And I I really love when people uh, give me fan art and stuff. It's so cool. Oh, that's awesome. That is so awesome. You know what you have for uh, what, that uh, uh, carved uh, piece of wood? It's going to be like exclusive because Spike Fireman has to retire for a couple of years due to his arthritis. Oh wow! That sucks. Oh dear. Yeah, yeah uh, he's, he announced that on the on the last Bronicon that he had to retire due to arthritis. Oh. So that. That piece of uh, carved wood has a lot of both uh, sentimental and kind of like even even uh, well a lot of sentimental value. That is yeah, that wow. Is... But anyway, um, no, I think um, you done a lot of voice acting and also you done a lot of singing part or singing roles. So, mm-hmm. is there any difference between voice acting and singing? Uh yeah. For singing, it's more I have to do. Um... Multiple, multiple takes because, and then um, I can string them together if like there's one part of one verse that I like better than the other. Uh, and usually for singing, uh, it's very rare that you're directed while singing, in my experience at least, because I usually just sing all I want and then send it to them. And then if they want a redo of something, then I address it. But usually it's um, you just do your own thing and then send it to them. Uh, and with voice acting, they uh, well, well, actually, for both, they give you notes and stuff like that usually. But so, do uh, you do the composite, or they, do they do the composite? Uh, they do it usually. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it depends on the project because, like, um, the next two episodes of Dark Swamp are the musical episodes, and which is a long story that will be explained in it. I'm, I'm keeping it vague on purpose because um, people will be like, "When's the next Dark Swamp?" And, on Twitter or something like that, and I'll be <laughs> like, "Well, the music has to be made," and they're like, "Music? What are you talking about?" And I'm like, "You'll find out." So for that, I'm um, having people compose it for me because I, I, dr- I, I, I was a drummer for like 11 years, but I don't actually know how to read music music, <laughs> so I can't write music on my own. Can't blame you. You know, drummers have like, what, eight drums in front of them? Keyboard players have 88 keys. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I'm good at keeping rhythm and stuff, but I, I can't do anything else. <laughs> oh, multi-talented. That's awesome. I did not know you could play the drum. <laughs> Yeah. So actually, did you do musical theater before as well? I used to live in Pennsylvania, uh, around Pittsburgh, and there's this thing called Pittsburgh Musical Theater, mm-hmm. and it's basically like a summer camp. It's basically like school. Like you have at 9 a.m. you have singing, and at 10 a.m. you have dance class, various different dance classes you can take, and then at the end um, you perform a musical. Uh-huh. So oh. I basically did that for like eight years or so, and I've taken quite a bit of acting classes and stuff. Wow, that 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 is cool. That is cool. So, um, the obvious question here is: you mentioned that you played a role in Queen Blade. So, how how did you get that role? I had auditioned for the same people. Uh, in, I guess I had only auditioned for one anime at that point. Uh, so far, I've auditioned for three anime, and I got one of them. Huh? Uh, and so they already had a recording of me uh, from a a previous audition so they were able to be like oh we should get her and uh my friend played uh a main character uh on the series and they needed a chick for izumi and they were like well we don't know who we're gonna get she's like oh i know someone who'd be great for that and they recommended me and i just i came in and recorded a couple days later (laughs) wow i recently listened to that episode and your voice range although it's your voice but you can really Pitch it high, and it sounds awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, I've uh, I've had to voice very low characters, but also very high characters. Like, um, I don't know if any of you have seen Tome, but it's an animation by Kerbifer, and I voice oh, a character yeah. called Hyperlinks. Yeah. I, I've seen that. Now I need to remember who's that character because, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, Hyperlinks is the little blue um, cat fairy type 
thing who wants to find her friend, Elescope. Oh. And Elescope is actually voiced by uh, one kid who does Pokemon Bridge with me. So that was cool. He wanted to get both of us in on that role because, you know, we, we work together. <laughs> wow, that's cool. I think I remember that character. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he, the first person he met was that dragon guy, right? Yeah, uh, Nylock. Yeah, yeah Nylock. and Hyperlinks has um, a, a very high voice. So her and uh, Nurse Joy from Pokemon Bridged are like some of the higher voices I've done. Ah, I did not know that was you. Wow, awesome! Wow, wow. I'm I'm <laughs> learning new things today. Mm. That is Everyone's cool. learning. Indeed, and that that um, anime tome or oh, sorry, not anime. It, that web comic. Oh, sorry, not web comic. <laughs> I'm derpy. But that. Uh, web show it's really good and people who do not know what i'm talking about i'll add it into the link in the show so you can go watch it because it's a really interesting um watch yeah i really like tom jesse do you have a picture of your oc uh-huh yeah i'll link it oh yeah oh, cool. we were wondering about that because oh yeah. we need to google search it yeah i tried yeah, you google. know thank- and i got the banana picture first. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you for, ans- for for asking that, Daniel, because I asked the question about the OC and then I don't ask where can I find a link to it. <laughs> yeah, because Everyone usually when we early. interview people, we see that on the Skype window, their OC right there. And I look at it for the whole show and then I'm like, where did that cutie mark come from? So now I need to see that cutie mark. Hey, yep, it's the thespian masks. Oh, ooh, you have a divine <laughs> art too. Oh. So do you draw? No, not at all. I suck at drawing. It's funny. Uh, John Giseco... <laughs> Uh, before we met each other, he was a f- huge fan of mine, and I was a huge fan of his. So, like, we met at BronyCon, and it was this this sort of thing where we were both fangirling over each other at the same time. And I was like, oh, my God, I love your stuff. You oh, my God, I love your stuff. It's great. Uh, so, <laughs> the second time we met was that um, we exchanged Skype contacts, and we were talking one day, and I was – I forget how it came up. But I was like, no, I can't draw, like, for anything. And he was like, I would love to have a drawing of yours. And I was like, you know what? I will draw you a horse. It'll be the best horse ever next time we see each other. So we were both at Big Apple Pony Con, and I went over to his booth, and I was like, I owe you a horse, good sir. So he pulls out a piece of paper from his sketchbook, and I draw the most horrible horse. I can't (laughs) at all, ever. And I sign it. I'm like, here you go, good sir. And he's like, I will treasure this forever. (laughs) Wow. That has to be something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Actually, so yeah, there's almost no surprise in that cutie mark. But yeah, it's. it's so, I mean, I, usually we'll be like somebody putting something like a pair of scissors, then like, what's that for? Or now I see what you mean by yours. But mm. why a Pegasus? Out of all the three, you know, Earth Pony, Pegasus, Unicorn, I've, I've always, you know, cross country, I've had a need for speed. So I think flying would just be like the coolest thing to do in that universe. Hmm. You said out three, really you cool. forgot about the fourth. Uh... No, 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 we're, got, no, we're not going to mention that. We're not going to mention that. But, <laughs> You're uh, all being very... Alec Ford princess. You yeah. like it. <laughs> very cool OC, but it's missing the horn, all oh, the wings, God. and the extra scars. And No, just kidding. It's so... actually really cool. I love purple, too. That's so... awesome. Everybody's, pur- everybody's favorite color becomes the color of their OC. Praise Ooh, the Lord boy. for colored equines. I become even whiter than what I am. <laughs> so, no, I think you mentioned earlier that you did a radio play for Fallout Equestria. So, is that out yet? Uh, yeah, the first episode's out. It contains all of Chapter 1, I believe. And it premiered October 27th, which was like the day before my birthday. So, that was ah. a nice little present. Because we've been working on the radio play for like at least a year. A year, maybe two years Uh and it was so cool to like finally see it all come together. And it was like, I thought it was going to be awesome, but when it came out, it was like three times as awesome as I thought it would. And I thought it was going to be pretty damn awesome, but it was everyone that I'm working with on the project is just so cool and so talented. And we have so many wonderfully talented people working on it. So I would definitely recommend it. Oh, okay. I'll have to give it a shot because follow Equestria is long. Yeah, it's so it's so cool to um, put it together and stuff because I like sometimes I'll get messages from people saying, you know, like I have dyslexia, so I couldn't read the fanfic myself. And I just want to thank you so much for um, putting together such a wonderful thing because I could just shut my eyes and imagine this universe. And that's like the coolest thing to me to like help people, you know, entertain people with my with my comedy and with my um, uh, dramatic readings and stuff like that. It just means the world to me. Uh, no waking, I have to say that. Your singing role fills my iPod with glee whenever I hear that song. Um, that the when 
final is singing about Pinkie Pie favorite song. I, I don't I don't remember that song, but I enjoy it so much. Oh, are you talking about um when the bass drops? Yes, that one. Sorry, I was derping. I just saw. I, I love that song. Oh, I'm glad. Your role in it was awesome. I was very thrilled because Sim Gratina like put out a video saying that he wanted to do a vinyl song, and he like specifically said it'd be cool if I could get the vinyl from Epic Web Time. <laughs> and I was in England at the time because I was oh. at a convention called Alcon. I was a guest there, so I didn't really have internet access. But as soon as I did, I got like a million tweets saying Sim Gratina wants to put you in a song, and I was like, <laughs> okay, okay, tell him that I'll contact him when I can. <laughs> so it was very cool to work on that, and. Um, he gave me the lyrics, and I was like, yeah, um, you know, sometimes for songs, uh, people might want me, since I'm, like, in character for vinyl, sometimes they ask me to switch around lyrics. So if you wanted me to do that, that'd be, like, totally fine with me. And he was like, oh, thank God, because I don't like these lyrics at all, so it'd be great if you could <laughs> do something with them. So I rewrote them a bunch. Some things stayed, but for, for the most part, I changed a lot of the lyrics, and it came together really well, and I was very happy about that. I enjoyed the song. And Sim Gratina did that blooper reel at the end. That was so funny. <laughs> yeah, I included that blooper at the end. He was like, I'm putting that in there. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, what the he was that part? Uh, it was it was coming out too whispery while I was singing it. So I was like, sometimes you can feel, oh, that's too whispery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh boy. So is it safe to say that you're more of an ad-lib actor or more of a, you know, loyal to script kind of actor? It depends on the script, really, because um, for a bridge series, uh, especially ones that I'm writing, I have a lot more freedom to ad lib what I want and okay. you know do whatever the hell I want with the script. But if it's a project that I myself uh, wasn't part of writing, I'll um, I'll usually throw in some ad libs, but I make sure to at least do a couple takes of the original line so that you know if they really are set on that line, then sure thing. But I ad lib a lot <laughs> during uh, other things like. Um, when I recorded for Tome, uh, Mike, uh, one kids, was over at my house at the time. So we were like, let's just get recording out of the way because you need to record Elescope and I need to record Hyperlinks. And we uh, we directed each other and <laughs> Curb still has the blooper reel somewhere. And it's full of like so much like just, just raunchy <laughs> things. Oh, God. <laughs> and banter and, and <laughs> it's – oh, my God. It's uh, – it's very fun to, to ad lib when someone else is in the room with you. Wow. Oh yeah. The keyword the keyword there is raunchy. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> Boys. But anyway, I, I think those are all the questions, right? Uh no, one last one. All right. So your name, No Whacking, where did the inspiration for that come from? I was in seventh grade and I needed to come up with a YouTube channel name and I was uncreative, so I, I came up with like my last name is Nowak, you know, so I came up with like Nowak 1, Nowak 2, <laughs> Nowak 1992. I was like, you know, stupid little kid and I didn't know how to think of proper names. And then I kept forgetting my passwords. And finally, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I need to write this stuff down. So I made an account for uh, Nowacking so that I could make my last name like a verb. And I was like, that's creative. Okay. <laughs> And I didn't realize it was, like, inappropriate. It's like a double entendre sort of thing. And I didn't realize <laughs> it until a couple of years later. Aye, aye. Okay. May, may I say, the first thing I think when I heard your name, when I read your name was Fushroda. <laughs> because it kind of reminds me of the Dobakin from Skyrim. Uh. <laughs> I get that all the time. And I never played really? Skyrim, but I totally get it. <laughs> I, only know, I only know that part about Skyrim. I Everybody it, knows though. only that bit. <laughs> <laughs> as, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, with that, I'm guessing there's some more questions, and I think we can move on with the show. And no, I can thank you for being on. You have been an awesome guest, and I'm sorry for holding you too long. I, I'm guessing you need to go somewhere. Yeah, no worries. I'm just going to get going, though. But thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much for coming over. Yeah, totally. I had a blast. And moving on to the next topic is shout outs. My shout-out goes to Noah King and also to you, Tan and James. Thank you for being on. And, uh, boy, this is the last episode of 2013. And, ay, ay, ay. and moving on, Dan, what about you? Oh, yes. A few shout-outs. First of all, Norman, thank you for having me on. It's great to be back. And, James, it's great to hear your voice again. 
<laughs> yes, I've missed the Spanish voice. Hola. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Everybody knows that you hate me. No, you don't no. like me. You don't look me in the eye anymore when we do it. <laughs> I've never yeah, yeah. you. I've never looked you in the eye even once, dude. <laughs> you. No. That so, proves it. You don't love me. <laughs> and he will come soon. Yeah. It's gonna be a knock on your door in five hours' time if there's no flight delay. Oh. Yeah, right. That's what you said to your last lover. Uh-huh. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> And also, one more to all the bronies who turned up at Comic Fiesta this year. Thank you so much for coming. For all of you who recognize me at Comic Fiesta, yes, I went as Pinkie Pie, in case some of you didn't know. Thank you very much, and it was great this year to see you again next year. Either way, I'll be seeing you again next year anyway. Indeed. And James, what, we, what about you? My shout-out is going to be kind of weird, but I'm going to explain it because I want to give a shout-out to 2013. Oh, my. Uh, not, weird, not weird at all. I completely understand a shout-out to a year. I don't think giving a shout-out to one person or one group in particular is going to be fair because this year has been chock full of things, groups, people, projects, ugh, everything that has made it absolutely amazing. 2013 might be the best year I have had in in, in years and this fandom and this podcast have been a big part of it. So uh, it's it's been a wonderful year. Like, I, I usually am overwhelmed with how many bad experiences and how many good experiences I have. They are always balanced. And sometimes the bad side has more than the good side. But this year, I can count my bad experiences with one hand. And maybe just like three fingers. It's It's just unbelievable how good this year has been and how riddled with positivity and 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 goodness and uh, and people coming together and getting in, getting together and like yes we love this and we are having so much fun with it so my shout out goes to 2013 and even though it's kind of a dreadful dreadful feeling this i think that we are not going to be able to repeat this year it's been I- I- impossible to recreate. Indeed. It's been a unique, unique experience. Well, we're really proud to be a part of that experience for you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for uh, making me part of something that is bigger than myself. Indeed. So, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshow.gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me at norman at mbshow.com daniel at the mbshow.com and daniel do you think we can get james uh, at the mbs show i was just about to ask that and yep let me get that done right now Alrighty then yay so if you want james you can contact james at mbshow.com and as for twitter you can reach the show's account at the mbs show sweetie mod will reply messages to stuff with you guys and i got no idea what sweetie mod is doing nowadays as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I'll tweet about food, toys, and whatever tickles my fancy. And then... Hi, you can reach me at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. Nowadays, I speak when I'm spoken to. <laughs> uh, I see. And what about you, James? You can find me at uh, James Cork in Twitter, or you can check my DeviantArt at jamescork.deviantart.com, and you can check my Pony Tumblr at askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Daniel Anthony. I have been James Cork. And I'm still no Wackick. <laughs> Yay! Anyway, I will see you next year. Wow, this is going to be an interesting episode. Anyway, bye, guys. Yeah, for the last time in 2013, we're signing off. Indeed. Signing off for the year. Bye-bye. Sometimes you can feel real envy. Be an IPJ. Love to rock the house for parties. But you never get time to play. Pinky, please, Pinky, change the song for me. When they play my favorite song above my head, it's in the long eye. I can't stop when the bass drops.
Jesus, won't you change the song for me? When they play my favorite song, I bob my head and sing along. I, I can't stop the bass drops. Feel that beat, it's running through me. Moves my hands, sings with my heartbeat. I can't feel a fire in me. When they play my favorite song, I bob my head and sing along. I, I can't stop when the bass drops. Feel that beat, it's running through me. Moves my hands, sings with my heartbeat. I can't feel a fire in me. Yeah, I have a couple of questions uh, for you. Uh, if you're okay with it, of course. No, no questions. <laughs> oh, oh. It's over. Interview ruin. You okay, come... I'm out of here. That's yeah. it. If you come to me at a convention thinking you can ask me questions <laughs> or you can speak to me, how dare you, first of all? I'm covering with my... Actu- <laughs> I'm actually covering with my question shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, um, bodyguard. So... First thing, she grabs your camera, smashes it on the floor and says, no pictures. <laughs> Oh my. I flip off she all the paparazzi need... so they can't use the photos in magazines. Uh-huh. You don't need no no bodyguard. You will attack them with your base cannon. Oh my. <laughs> I, that explains uh... how she runs from the paparazzi. <laughs> it does. I like parkour and stuff. I just I go nuts. Um, but um, I can't parkour. Oh. I can't even do a handstand. But anyway, I. Um... Hey, is the thought that counts? Indeed, indeed. <laughs> I like to. Uh...